Hello, welcome to Chem Cam. I'm Mrs. Newman, and I've got an AP Chem multiple choice question for those students preparing for the May exam. This one has to do with what's called a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Now, this is a classic gas laws question that often appears on the College Board exam. So let's learn a little chemistry. The key to this type of problem is understanding the information that's given in this distribution or graph. Now, it gives you the number of molecules versus the speed. So what this tells me is that as you move from left to right across the x-axis, the speed of the molecules actually increases. So we've got molecules moving faster. Not only that, but as you move from bottom to top along the y-axis, the number of molecules actually increases. So, on the bottom left-hand corner of that curve, we have a few molecules moving at the slowest speed. And at the bottom right-hand corner of the curve, you have a few molecules moving at the fastest speed. With the majority of those molecules moving at some speed between those two extremes. In fact, if this was a perfect bell-shaped curve, then the average speed would occur at the very peak of the curve. However, it's not. It's got a bit of a tail to the right side of this curve. That tail to the right is actually going to bring the average speed ever so slightly to the right of the peak of the curve. So one might estimate the average speed to be approximately just to the right of the peak of the curve. Now let's take a look at exactly what it is they're asking us about this curve. They tell you that the graph above shows the speed distribution of molecules in a sample of gas at a certain temperature. They tell you which of the following graphs shows the speed distribution of the same molecules at a lower temperature as a dashed curve. Well, what we need to do is we need to focus in on the lower temperature part of this question. And what you have to remember is anytime you're talking about temperature on the Kelvin scale, which you're going to want to use when you're dealing with gases, that Kelvin temperature is directly proportional to kinetic energy. In fact, if you look at your reference sheet, one of the kinetic energy formulas on that reference sheet is going to be 3 halves R times T where R is your gas constant and T is temperature in Kelvin. Well, since the three halves and the R are both constants, then that kinetic energy depends upon the temperature. So if temperature increases on the Kelvin scale, kinetic energy will also increase. And vice versa, if the temperature on the Kelvin scale decreases, then the kinetic energy of the particles in that sample of matter also decreases. Now, the graph doesn't talk about kinetic energy, but it does talk about speed. And there's a second formula you should be aware of for kinetic energy. And that is your kinetic energy equals one half the mass times velocity or speed. So if your kinetic energy decreases because you see a decrease in temperature, then the velocity is also going to decrease. So 
So here, since the temperature is lowered and the kinetic energy is gonna be lower, then those molecules are gonna to start to move slower. So we're actually looking for a shift to the left, to the left, to the left. All right, so let's take a look at our options. In letter A, we see a distinct shift to the right. So a shift to the right is actually an indicator of those molecules moving faster, which corresponds to a higher kinetic energy, which would actually indicate a higher temperature, not what we're looking for. In letter B, the height of the curve just decreases, which corresponds to a fewer number of molecules. However, there's no shift left or right, so that's not what we're looking for either. Letter C, once again, there's no shift in the height of the curve, but it does distinctly shift to the right indicating again that that speed of those molecules have increased, which would correspond to a higher temperature. And we're looking for a lower temperature. Finally, in letter D, we see that, see that distinct shift to the left, meaning more of those molecules are moving at a slower speed. And that's exactly what we need. So letter D is the answer here. I hope this helps you prepare for the May exam. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. If not, continue to follow along for more AP Chem content. Hope to see you soon.